pick up and all right, so Matt says, yeah. mm -hmm. says you want to talk about your other hand? Uh, this rifle is actually just exactly like the other one. I'm just using my older rail that I used previously on this build. Um, basically made a gun that I could use at uh, when I go to high ground or other CQB fields. So this should shoot right. 350 internally. Um, this is actually the backup gun for this. Meaning when I travel, all I do is just, since they're both GMP, I just have my upper removed. Whoop! That was it. Oh, because the mag was in. Derp. That was a derp moment. Sorry. But when I travel, actually, all I do is bring this gun with this, and then that so way. So you can go 350 or. Oh, interesting. No, no. So at, at, with this barrel, it is shooting where I, you know, just the same as this one. But um, when I'm shooting indoors, this oh. this barrel actually is, which is much shorter, um, is shooting 350. Got it. So this so, doubles as your backup in case that gun goes down. Correct. Got so it. then if, if this gun goes down, it's just really quick to just swap it. It is pretty much the exact same body, so there's not much to really change. This was an old salient gray body that I had um, from a salient gray. So um, other than that, that's the purpose of this gun, really, and it has a one of the Ace Tech tracery or Xcore Tech tracer units yeah. on the front because and it you fits know, inside the, uh, the handguard. Which yeah, is cool. one of the things that I really like, and um, people should you know use cheap lights when if you don't need to use an IR function, just use a cheap right. light for airsoft. Right. Or if you're trying to blind somebody. Or if you're trying to blind somebody, but like realistically, these 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 uh, lights are just yeah, they, they work. do the job. Yeah. If you don't need to use an IR function, mm -hmm. they are perfect. So I'll put this back together and you can talk about your, sure. your, your specialty um, project over there. My specialty project. Uh, okay, so mm, I love this gun, but gosh dang it, it's so heavy. So, oh, uh, backing up, the 416 is like eight, eight and a half pounds. Uh, this is 9.3 pounds, and I have no idea where all the weight came from. This is my Mark 18. I guess you could call it a Block 3, even though it's not... You know, it's not really a Block 3. The King, it's a King Arms Mark 18 base. I use a King Arms Mark 18 12-inch rail uh, so that I could use um, this style of handguard that has M-Lock that I happen to like. This style of handguard uh, to make it a Block 3. It is a Colt receiver, in case people were wondering if it was a real Block 3 because it was a Colt receiver. Uh, other than that, basically, I, I set this up to closely, if not exactly, replicate uh, something I'd be shooting um, a real firearm. So uh, my real rifle almost exactly replicates this, except it's a, it's a black EOTech instead of a rose gold fake one. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and, I don't have a, and I don't have a PEQ on my real one because I live in California. There's no reason to have that. I don't yeah. even have that on there, actually, there's technically. there's legalities for having a pack on your rifle in California, is there? I don't know. I don't think so. I know I don't have a vert grip. Yeah, well, yeah. I don't. I don't have a. Yes, I have this. Oh, vert, you have an angled foregrip. I have is, this vert is, grip right, right, right. On, on on my real right. one. <laughs> Let's be real. Um, this one is an EPS build, so it comes with a. <laughs> Whoa, dude! Like, it comes with a Max model hop up. Um, I for I gave up the blue trigger because I just liked the the plain plain AR trigger, uh, but full EPS upgrades, um, shoots 30 rounds a second. I think this one chronos in at 350 or 360, but because of that awesome hop-up unit, it really has no problem getting range. I don't need 400 FPS to get range in a Milsim game. This reaches this out and touches this, people. This, this one's 395. Wow. Well. On the dot. Uh, and then this one also <laughs> takes my... Um, yeah, your tracer unit is pretty cool. Though. My uh, my can with the uh, the tracer unit, which I, I really don't use in Milsim uh, games, but I'm, I like how it looks. I might have to just really build one of those. Um, hey man, I'm telling you, I, I we can make it happen. Oh. Um, other than that, uh, besides its weight, I absolutely love this platform, and I really like the PTS Ergo grip or their uh, enhanced polymer oh, yeah. grip, I forgot I had which that George one. is also <laughs> using. Um, so you know, you pick and choose the the parts that work for you the best, that you like the look of, and that are the most comfortable for you. Um, something else you might notice that George and I have going on on most of our rifles are these. 
This is not a traditional rubber band. This is called a ranger band. You can find them pretty easily. In fact, I think we're going to start carrying these soon. I know that we're looking for a supplier that yeah. can, you can um, buy bring them in. Most other online retailers like Amazon. You can buy them in a variety of diameters. They usually sell them on a variety pack. These are a great way to fasten down cables, cords, stocks. This happens to be where I sling my uh, sling around the back of my stock um, when it's in transport and then I just tuck it under my ranger band so it doesn't get in the way like I was dealing with this stupid sling the whole time. <laughs> But uh, Ranger bands are a great way to fasten things to your rifle without electrical tape. They're UV stable, so they're not going to break down in the sun like a traditional rubber band. Correct. So after it's been in the sun for a couple weeks, it's not going to snap on you the next time you use it. So Ranger bands are great. They can do a lot of things. Uh, that's enough about ARs. ARs are the most popular What are you talking about? Platform. We talked about MP5s first. I know, but that, that's enough about the most common. Let's talk about, really, one of the longest running AEGs besides the M4 that's still extremely popular that I don't think gets nearly enough attention in terms of the customization market. Let's talk about your AK. Uh, so this is, you know, I, we talked a little bit about last, I think, New Year's of what I was going to be working on in 2020. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I decided this is what I was going to be working on in 2020. I did a custom build for that was just no internal upgrades for the company a while back, uh, basically creating this exact AK. Uh, it was kind of inspired by rifle dynamics a little bit. Okay. Um, and you know, you have to do being able to fit the the mag pull grip on there is actually kind of a challenge. Like you really have to maybe do a little bit of fixing to it sometimes to make it work. So did that require you to start with a specific AK base platform to make this work? Or does it work no. with any so AK the, as long as you're willing to modify? As long as you're willing to modify the grip a little bit. It works on SEMAs. I haven't tried it on an ENL, and I haven't tried it on an LCT. It probably would fit better on an ENL and an LCT. Probably require just a mallet. But the SEMA did require just a little bit of Dremel work. Not okay. much. Nothing crazy. Um, the thing is, is the one we built back in the day, we had to like like buy the rail, buy everything. Like, but now SEMA has basically this rail on a gun already. Okay. So it just <laughs> that was pretty so easy. So you started with that as the base, and then just put on the handguard. Just put on the handguard. Put on the US Palm grip. Uh, the it will be EPSed out in the middle, and then um, hopefully going to get it coated into. We're going to like have black sheet do a nice OD green to it. Oh, so cool. It, it looks really nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, using the new Sun Optics. Um, their version of a micro red dot, very handy. Um, One of the things I'm always struggling with when we're doing, you know, the photos for social media and stuff like that is, what kind of optic do you put on an AK that doesn't look out of place? Like, you know, you can't put a short dot on it uh, or, or an EOTech because that wouldn't look canon, right? Or does uh, it matter? I mean, it, the thing is, it, it, it depends where you mount the optic. Okay. So if you're using, a, with an AK, if you're using something that if you're using some of the newer dust covers or they stuff have that, the have, rail? that have rails, then you can use those optics that are more traditional. Okay. Such as an EOTech clone or... Okay. A short dot of some kind. Um, I didn't chose not to do that just to kind of keep it stock and having uh, just a regular micro red dot that's basically around where your rear sight is. Mm -hmm. It's not too distracting. So it does work. You can shoot that way. The nice thing about red dots too is because you're not dealing with any magnification or um, what do you, uh, parallax. Parallax. Uh, you can put it as far forward as you want, Correct. really, Correct. Uh, and you're not going to have problems tuning it to to meet up with your where your BBs are going. So if you have an AK and you are upgrading it, you can absolutely do something like a red dot and not really give up anything in order to make it functional. The, the things that are not complete on it is, um, is basically I'm going to be using one of the new rail mounts with a new light. Okay. Uh, I'm basically building this to be able to do what this gun can do. Just in AK form. Just in AK form. So that means I'm going to have to spend some money on a light. Oh, I'm probably going to move my Scout M300 off my real AR and move it onto here. Mm. And then I'm going to probably change my real AR1 to an M300 Scout so it's a little bit lower profile. On sure. That okay. So uh, that's how I'll probably, you know, I'll be buying a better light for my real AR and then moving the, the, sure. the used light onto here. Now, uh, when it comes to like mag choices, uh, I think it's a cool looking mag, but is that like a lot of people, you know, Eh, it's not. A lot I of mean, people give us crap for putting 74 <laughs> mags on a 47 or, or you know, whatever. It, it, the fact is, it's airsoft, so go with the mag that you the like. The thing is, the fact is, it's airsoft. Go with the mag you like. The anyway. real, real AKs. So first off, airsoft AKs. Yeah. There is no difference in the outer barrel whatsoever. Right. Whether you're getting a 47 or anything like that, but a real AK right. will have different barrels sizes. So in airsoft, which barrel is it? 
I'm pretty sure it's just the the 74 barrel. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's probably the 47 barrel to be oh, honest. Oh, well, or, or probably okay. just the AKM barrel, which is a 40, which is a 762 by 39. Okay. Most likely. Okay. But it also could, you know what? Actually, it might be a 55. It might be a 545 because I'm looking at it compared to this barrel. Oh, right interesting. Now. Yeah. Um, so, so but they don't. But none of the AK. So none of the AK manufacturers for airsoft mm -hmm. ever change their barrel. This is just a stock. Whatever size. it is. Okay. I think you could literally take almost every single one and they're probably around the same size. Right. So if somebody wants to complain that like, oh, you've got a different pistol grip, it shouldn't have XYZ magazine is really irrelevant because it's more would, based on what the barrel is than the grip. Every, you know, and, and like I said, is the thing is though is AKs are very different than ARs mm -hmm. and in the real gun world because the, out, the, the, the barrel is just done differently on different manufacturers even. So right, if you right. have some, you know, it's 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 not as, some people do it, some companies do it different way than other companies do. Right, right. So, yes, I chose the mag that doesn't bend as much and it's kind of translucent. Because it fits in mag carriers it's, more reasonably. And it's translucent reasonably. so I can see the amount of BBs yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. That's basically the, like, and I like the look of the magazine in the gun. Oh That's, yeah. I mean, it's a modern style. You've got a modern style magazine. I think it looks awesome. Is there a big transition from going from being familiar with AR controls to doing oh, yeah. uh, AK controls? Did oh, that yeah. take time to get used to? Um, I need to get one of those. Oh, the the mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, but with the additional. It would be nice, but then thing. again, most of the time, most Milsim games you're using these days are all semi-auto anyway. So right, right. Probably won't even worry about it. Who knows? Well, now that you've learned a little bit more about our builds and what we use day to day, let's talk a little bit about your guys' comments from the comments section in the last video. I guess I'll start off with Jack O'Neill SG1. Jack O'Neill says, I have two Tipmans, a short one for CQB and a long one for regular play. The long one is painted green shades, the short one is black. On the long one, I run a Vortex Strike Fire 2. That's a nice optic, by the way, for an airsoft gun. Mm -hmm. Then I have angled foregrips on both of them, and I use a VTAC two-point sling. Excellent choice. We talked about two-point slings. The angled foregrips offer me a great way to hold the airsoft, the, a, your, yeah, the airsoft gun for a long time, and control it. The two-point sling is truly excellent, both for carrying the gun when not in use and retaining, and for retaining it when I'm climbing something and or I'm using my pistol. Unfortunately, lasers and weapon lights are prohibited here in Germany, so oh, I can't that's true. run them. Um, you can't have a weapon light in nope, Germany? you cannot. Can you have a regular flashlight? No, you cannot. No, I mean like if you were holding it. Could you one hand a flashlight and, P and MP5 in the other hand? I don't know. If it's not attached. I, I would imagine. Are you guys that. into splitting hairs like that? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, when I play abroad, I usually fix a regular flashlight to the gun with some scope rings. Hey, you do what you have to. Scope rings are an excellent way to mount something without spending a lot of money because scope rings can be purchased for really, really uh, inexpensive. Um, yeah, so Jack, it, it, it brings sounds up like a you good, got some cool It brings builds. up a good point that we didn't talk about. And one thing is, is that vertical grips, right? So a lot of people think this is how you hold a vertical grip. Isn't that how you hold a vertical grip? No. That's, that's how, like, especially, I don't think Magpul even designed their vertical grips to be held that, held that way. Because the thing is with a vertical grip, the idea behind it is to, when you're shooting, to be able to control your recoil. But it's right. actually giving you more of a hand stop to be able to then move the rifle. So the sure. majority of people, I say majority, use a vert grip, a vert grip as a hand stop. That's, yeah. Majority. Might as well just call them hand stops. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, there are exceptions to the rule. There are, um, I'm sure there's seal operators who use a, a longer style, older vertical grip in that way. As a vertical grip. As a vertical grip. Right. And that's, and you know what? They put their light controls on their vertical grip. There are some people who do that. Right. But like, I know that the Magpul ones, if you've ever held, like if you ever hold a Magpul one like this, it feels kind of weird. Yeah. It is much more comfortable to use it as a hand stop. In my opinion, yeah. Kind of like I basically like use it as like a forty-five. Yeah, no, I I agree. So that's sorry. I, it's, it's, cool. it's, cool. <laughs> it's habit. I, it's a good habit. Not his habit. It's my habit to flinch. Oh, yeah. I just like it's airsoft. Yeah. So I mean, like that's yeah. the thing. You have that's you know using the AFGs or mm -hmm. using the the hand stops. I like the strike on this gun only because I thought it looked super cool. It yeah. Okay. And, uh, doing, I was, it I doing it by looks. That's doing it all by looks. <laughs> Yeah, but that's just a good point that it was brought on by the user. Uh, Dylan Swanson, or Swenson, I think he's actually commented a lot before. He said he used to have a pack, light and backup sights, red dot, sling, and grip on his gun that I painted. 
So you used to have these things. After a few games, I found out that even though it looked awesome, it weighed way too much than I wanted to. <laughs> the Agreed. gram was already metal, so I agree, I'm Dylan. nothing like Alphonse and bodybuilder <laughs> in bodybuilding. So. Neither are we. We just <laughs> suffer the weight. Once I decided to keep... Uh, you know what helps a lot is when you're not playing Airsoft, always have your gun on a two-point sleeve behind your back. That makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And find things in the game <laughs> to rest it on. <laughs> Wall, window, barrel, yeah. shoulder... Uh, once he decided to keep it simple with a red dot and a grip and a sling, he uh, he liked it a lot. Uh, he thinks he might go back to his old setup unless uh, he doesn't think he'll go back to his old setup unless he thinks uh, unless he is going to use it for dark rooms or for milsim games. Sure. Um, as for like, painting guns, he lives in a desert environment, and he found out that uh, it would be targeted more due to having a black gun that stands out in the bush. Once I painted it, it fit into my environment. I noticed so I wasn't getting shot as often as I could actually, and I could actually surprise people. Hmm. Okay, so painted guns. Yeah. Uh, the only gun I painted is uh, our LMG that's on the wall. So. Yeah. And some of my older AKs I painted, but I'm probably not going to paint any of these guns. I was going to say, I can't bring myself to paint them. I don't, I, I don't, I don't honestly think, I don't think that you can, maybe like in the in the desert environment, if you're like hiding behind sagebrush, maybe your gun can give you away. I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't feel like it, it can, I feel like if you're smart, you can make it so it doesn't give you away. All right. So we have a conflicting... Not saying that the guy wasn't smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we do have a conflicting opinion from David Ball, who says, for me, on all my guns, it's keep it light, function over fashion. So optic, grip, sling, and a suppressor if it's functional. Uh, yeah, clearly I'm all about looks. So... Well, okay. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, which is fine. Like, you should absolutely, if you want, if you want your gun to look like an entire army could use it at once, optic thunder style. Well, do that. But the thing is, 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 is to counteract that point, right? So, number one, okay, if you, if I wasn't using this gun for long range, I wouldn't use this optic for right. sure. I'd be using a short dot, right? A, a short little micro dot, and actually to aim down the sights, meaning it would be zeroed at where my sights were. Right. I at whatever distance is your yeah. most engaging people. So that would lighten it up if I wasn't using, I mean like I used, this gun hasn't changed because I used to play a lot more games that were Milsim games that were 24 mm -hmm. hours or longer where you would be using a night setup. No, you're right. I, and should, I should just, I you should just cannot, take this off. I mean like I you really it. need, if you're using at night and if you specifically start getting into using night vision at night, right. you need an IR pointer and you need an IR illuminator. It's just that simple. Yep. It helps you a lot. Yep. In, so that, all that weight there. Okay, yes, the backup sights are completely by look and completely point. Oh, yeah, we don't need that. <laughs> yeah. I will give you that. Yeah. I will take off this this one on here eventually just because. Yeah. Maybe I'll get rid of all my backup sights. Yeah. I spent, I spent. Actually, this gun has no backup sights. This is bare bones. Yeah. But I use the actual. And it's the lightest of the group. Yes. Yeah. So that would be the counter accurate point. Like, it's not for looks for me. And we've got one uh, one final comment from Hank Lero or Lero. Oh, uh, his philosophy on for his weapon is to keep it simple, stupid. Okay, so we're not simple. Um, hey, see what I did there? If I'm playing in the middle of a day or outside, I'm not going to run in any kind of um, light or laser because of you know. Okay, so he yeah. takes off his. I don't because I don't want to re-zero this stuff again. To be honest with right, you, right, right. I don't. Right. <clears throat> it's it's. It's not that much. I'll put up with the weight to not have to re-zero that laser. Um, since he's right-handed, and he'll do everything in his, in his power to keep his attachments off the left side of his gun so it's not catching on any of his gear, that's very smart. As for optics, since I run real steel rifles and Vortex Optics are a great budget brand with outstanding warranty, I is what I run in Airsoft. If my glass gets shot out, I know their warranty will replace it. Dude, I want to be the guy my who rifles, but that. nothing too fancy. Yeah. I mean, using real optics on your real guns is not a problem. I used primary arms optics for years. I'm using the sun optics on this. I'm switching to sun optics on this. And right. C-Star, this, this, this scope can run on a rifle very well. Oh, yeah. yeah. I use that um, on my M27. I mean, this is a clone EOT. <laughs> or a fake EOT. Yeah. And they're all trash. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. mean, you know, so yeah. it, it's... It's kind of up to, and, and the main reason is because like I don't use this gun very often. It was just on there because I had it lying around. Yeah. It's not, yeah. If, if I was going to use it more, I'd probably put my primary arms on there. Yeah, yeah. I just think it'd be funny to be the guy working at Vortex 
you get this optics optic sent in, you can tell it's been shot with a BB. And you're like, oh, well, what happened? And, the guy, <laughs> and Hank's just like, oh, I don't know. Uh, you know, dropped it, something at the range, some ricochet, I don't know, something happened. This guy's like, oh, okay, no problem. Sends out a new optic. I mean, it's a great that's warranty. great. That's great, though. I mean, yeah. like I said, I wouldn't want to be switching my optics back from my real guns to my airsoft guns constantly. Because the zero. Because be. I, I really don't want to be messing with the zero, so I wouldn't be doing that. But if you're using the same opt, like I wouldn't use my MR an MRO on my real on my airsoft rifle. I just think that'd be a little. Uh, oh yeah. A real overkill. One, a yeah. little overkill. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Vortex makes some great options. Uh, Primary Arms, uh, Holosun. There's a whole bunch of good brands that run that are budget optics for real firearms that work great for airsoft. Yeah. In One fact, if you're on a budget, NC Star and Aim Sports make excellent optics for really low budgets. Yes. So you can find something that works for you just about at any budget. And the nice thing about those optics, and you know, any optic that is created for, you know, most of them have, if they're illuminating. Red dots mm -hmm. have very good battery life. So if you leave oh, yeah. it on by accident, it will still be working when you get back. Which I do constantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I found that with my primary arms to be very, very nice. Yeah. So. Well, now you've seen how George and I set up, uh, you know, the, the guns that we use most often. Obviously, we have more guns than this, but they're... Uh... No, this is it. This is all you Oh, really? Oh, yep. God, I've got, guns. I've got a lot more than this. Nope. I don't want to talk about I have the a pistol, ones. and I have one Elite Force 1911 tack that is so boring that no one would ever want to really see oh. it. Well, good thing we don't have more time because that would just be a long. We've already talking, taken up enough yeah. time today. Uh, Chris is shaking his head, going like, "Yeah, you guys are gonna kill me in editing." Yep. Keep so. the conversation going in the comments section. If you guys have some input on things that you would do differently, or how you set up your rifles, how uh, you might choose different accessories, we'd love to read your comments and find out how you guys choose to set up your platforms based on where you play most often. With that said, it's time to get into the prompt for next month. Lay it on us, George. All right, so we're going to talk about, uh, per request, we asked mm -hmm. last week, do you want us to talk about helmets and comms? And you said yes. Yeah. Everybody was like, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So next week, we will be talking about comm setup. So if you have a comm setup you'd like to share or advice you want to share, we're going to be talking about everything from how you, you know what kind of helmets are out there, mm -hmm. both um, airsoft and real helmets mm -hmm. that are affordable, as well as real comm setups as well as uh, ones meant for ones more meant for airsoft, airsoft right? um, and different options that you have so and if you guys have questions make sure to put those in the comment section as well because we're going to do kind of the same thing and talk yeah. about uh, some of the comments that we like the most and the questions we like the most hopefully it will not be as long-winded as this episode because i think the information is a little bit more succinct mm -hmm. um and uh, and there aren't as many options i think yeah we brought too many options yeah our my bad. bad our bad i brought more than you did so by one that's not True. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Not So Round Table. We're glad to have you here. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, please do hit the bell icon so you can be notified of our latest videos, like the next episode of the Not So Round Table. We wouldn't want you to miss it or you know miss out on important information that you can learn. As always, make sure you're playing hard, playing safe, and playing responsibly when you play airsoft. And uh, let's go transport these guns home in gun bags. Yeah, and we'll see and you on cases. the field. Oh, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a very long episode. 40 minutes, probably. No, you're at 50. Oh. Aww.